Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to take a deep dive into the Hot Toys Back to the Future Part 3 car, as presented by the release info on the Sideshow website that just came out over the weekend. Let me start by saying I've been very impressed with their attention to detail and the accuracy of the Back to the Future Part 3 components of the car, although there are a couple of issues and I'm going to address those in this video. Now this video is going to be a little different from the other comparison videos that I do on the Eagle Moss and also the Hot Toys Part 2 uh, car where I actually have the vehicles and I compare them to a, an actual DeLorean. This one, obviously it's a pre-order, it's not available yet, so I, I don't have it here. I can't take measurements of the wheels. As we've seen on the Part 2 car, the wheels were about 10% larger um, than, than accurate. So in this video, I'm only going to be comparing uh, the images and the descriptions on the Sideshow website and compare them to the screenshots from the, from the movie. And along with the movie screenshots, I'm going to be using this book as a reference. This is the Haynes Manual DeLorean Time Machine Workshop Manual. And I will put a link in the description to that. It's available on Amazon. It's only like 20 bucks. It's a great resource. It goes into the actual like part numbers of some of the components. It, uh, as, I mean, even in that hood box on the part three car. So I'm going to be referring back to that as well through this video. For the actual Back to the Future part three car components, I'm going to break it down into six components. The first one, the wheels. You get the 1955 wheels and you also get the train wheels in this. Um, there is going to be a wheel height adjustment so you can adjust the height of the suspension. It'll be higher for the part uh, three off-road vehicle and lower for the part three train vehicle. And that's accurate to the movie. Um, the the off-road vehicles, they, they had a different suspension to them. It, it lifted them up higher off the ground. So that's great they included that. Um, another component, the hood box. That's probably the most notice, notable on this. Uh, they do include a tow bar. And that was seen in all three movie cars. Not included in the first two Hot Toys versions. Now this part three, they do include it. This is also going to have the Firebox temp gauge. And it'll have additional dash wiring. And I'll go over all that stuff in this video. Towards the end of the video, I'm also going to be touching on the inaccuracies of what I'll call the legacy parts, um, the parts that are that were produced from the molds uh, that Hot Toys made for the first version of this car. Now they kept those same molds, I would imagine, and they just reproduced the parts for the Part Two car and then also the Part Three car that we have here. So those inaccuracies just kind of carried over. Um, I don't expect they'll do anything with those. Uh, only because they've already invested in the tooling to make this. Um, so as far as the part three specific components, this car isn't coming out until the, the website says a release of January, 2025. So it's possible that the inaccuracies of the part three specific components, maybe it's early enough. They can address those issues before production. Okay. First up will be, uh, the wheels. Uh, we'll walk through those. Now on the Hot Toys Part 2 car, in my previous video, we had seen that those wheels were modeled 10% larger than uh, the actual DeLorean wheels for whatever reason. Um, now on this, we don't have the actual car, um, the actual Hot Toys car. So we can't put a ruler on these wheels. Um, we only have the images that they show us here. And uh, from the images, a side-by-side, -side, we'll look at a side-by-side -side here. The side-by-side -side looks pretty good. Um, just compared with all the surrounding components, like the fenders, uh, the, the size of the car itself, it, it doesn't stand out as being in inaccurate looking. Um, if you look at the part two, photos that are on the on the sideshow website here i uh, you're gonna see it it stands out you can see that those wheels are noticeably larger than they should be uh but here they they look really good um and the same with the train wheels too 
I'll do a side by side here. You can see the train wheels look pretty close too. Um, <clears throat> now, one thing I'll point out with the adjustability for the height, you can see the, the, if you look at kind of the center of the wheel and then kind of go follow the rocker panel line, you can see where that's, where that's in line and compare it with screenshot from the movie. You can see how the, how that compares to the off-road version here. It actually looks good. Now, in the movie, the off-road wheels, the 1955 wheels, they're not really off-road wheels, they're just wheels from 1955, on an off-road suspension, um, those are 14-inch rims. And in the real DeLorean, those real DeLorean stock wheels are 14-inch up front and 15-inch in the back. Um, so when they switched out to the 1955 wheels, they should be the same size. And that's how it visually looks in the images from Sideshow. But we don't have the actual car, the model here, uh, so we can't measure them. But I did some research and looked through this book. And I'll put an image of this of the page here. But they, they do say that the... Uh, the tires used were Sears brand F78-14. And I looked those up and the diameter of the tire should be 27 inches. And if you divide that by six, because this is all a factor of six with a six scale model, those model tires should be 4.5 inches in diameter. If Hot Toys is watching this, they can verify that it's 4.5 inches. Or if you're watching this video a year from now and you have your car, um, you can compare it and see what they what they measure out to. The tread width on those tires is 6.26 inches. So that equates to 1.04 inches. So that's how wide your Hot Toys tire should be. And the white walls are 2 and 3 eighths inches. That, that, that's how wide that white band going around the tire should be. So that equals 0.4 inches. Uh, 1885 version of the, with the train wheels, they're actually not train wheels, they're hand car wheels. Um, and I got that info again from this book. I'll show you the, an image from that page. And those train, the hand car wheels, they were modified um, the spokes were cut out and it was flipped around and that was to give it, to give it more width, um, on the car itself. So it could fit on the, onto the, the standard width of the train tracks. Um, the Hot Toys version does show the cut line, which is great. And they show the welds too. The accuracy of these weathered hand car uh, wheels is great. It looks it looks very good. And I looked online, I could not find any info on hand mid nineteenth century hand car wheels. So I guess we're just kind of out of luck. You know, we're just going to have to just trust that. Oh, what's this nineteenth uh, century hand cart? Let's go ahead and measure these wiggles. This so looks like right at 19 and a half. Yeah, 19 and a half inches. And the width looks like about four and three quarter. And you can see this is where they would have cut and then flip this around to get the spacing they needed on that DeLorean. Oh, there you go. So we got the measurements of the 19th century hand car wheels. Oh, that's great. See, that's the kind of quality reporting you get from this channel. All right, well, so it comes out to 19 and a half inches in diameter. Divide that by six, and those train wheels, they should be 3.25 inches in diameter. 
the width of those train, I keep saying train, the hand car wheels is 4.75 inches. Divide that by six, they should be 0.8 inches. Okay, moving right along to the hood box. And if you look over in the bottom right hand side, there's the image of the book, the reference book that I have here. And let's take a look at this number 12. This number 12 is called a GE cage resistor. And if you look in the screenshot, it's pretty accurate. The image in the book is like a 3D generated image of the actual one used in the movie. So I'm going to be kind of like referencing both of them at the same time. They're both pretty accurate to each other. Um, if we look at that item, compare it to the Hot Toys image up here, and it's it almost looks like an aerosol can laying on its side with a screen on the top of it. And you can tell that that's not accurate. Um, it needs to be, I mean, kind of more of like a, like a rectangular shape, not a round shape, not a cylinder. Um, and instead of one wire connector, it should have four. Let's take a look further back in the box, item number 11. That is the, I guess I don't know what that is. I, IMAC, E-I-M-A-C. You just call it an iMac? I don't know. 250 at the vacuum tube. So this tube has a silver base to it. And on the hot toys, it's more of a copper. Okay, and then if we move further back, you have that big rectangular box. I think that's item number one here. A Sola constant voltage transformer. Okay, if you look at that box, it should have this item number two, this Art-13 PA plate meter, and it's totally missing from the Hot Toys. So that should be right next to this cable that's coming out. And I wonder if they didn't just make this mistake, because if you look in the screenshot down here, just the angle of the camera, I mean, it kind of almost looks like what they're trying to do in the Hot Toys. Um, but that's not the case. I have other images. I'll show one here now that shows a little bit of a different angle and it does show accurate to the book. Um, there's also these wires coming out the side and you can see that's also missing from the hot toys and even the cable running out the side, it should have more of a smaller diameter tube connector and it's got the larger connector. Again, maybe they thought this was part of it. So that's everything on this side that I noticed that is inaccurate. I take that back. Look at this tube here. See how tall this tube is? And it shows in the screenshot from the movie here as well. Almost right up to the top of that. Well, almost in line with that wire. The tube is a lot shorter here. So that needs to be taller. Okay, let's take a look at the other side of the box. Okay, so from this angle here, you can see that there's supposed to be some sort of a cutout in this box. There's a couple of them, and it shows up here in the screenshot, but it's missing on the Hot Toys. And from this angle, Everything else looks pretty good. There isn't anything that's jumping out at me. Well, except maybe this. I don't know, this base looks a little different. Yeah, that base is off. It should just be kind of a smaller connector. Or just a clamp. The wires just go in. It looks like there isn't really a base to it. Okay, but everything else, like the, the wood grain on the box looks great. You can see how the box was made out of a plywood with the, ver the vertical grains. Same with the Hot Toys box. The leather straps look good. They go through the buckle in the same way. Aside from the few components that are sticking out to me, everything else looks pretty accurate. Another one of the items that they added to this Part 3 car is a bunch of new cabling 
on the top of the dashboard, right, right in front of the driver position. So above the instrument cluster, you can see in this image here, there's a bundle, a black wire bundle. Um, this was not present in the first two movies. This is a part three car edition. And you can see in the image on the Hot Toys version, they also put that in there. So that's good. So Hot Toys also added the removable tow bar. You can put it on, it's magnetic, or you can take it off. And I was kind of curious why they didn't just leave it on. Well, looking through the movie, I'll show you three different screenshots here. You have one screenshot where they just have a screen. You can see it's just a screen. There's no tow bar on there. Another screenshot, there is a tow bar. And you can see this other screenshot, the screen and the tow bar, they're not there. So, I mean, throughout the movie, it showed up, it went away. I'm guessing maybe that's why they, they made it removable. And here you can see images of the firebox temp gauge. This is another addition to the part three car. And it sits right next to the time circuits in front of the plutonium chamber gauges. And it's on, it's a, it's on the end of a cable and that cable um, in the movie, you can see Marty he pulls on this gauge to get it closer to himself. So it's something that can be kind of, uh, kind of pulled out or retracted and put back into place. And it looks like in the hot toys, at least from the images, it's really hard to tell just because the resolution it, when you zoom in, it, you lose a lot of detail. But it looks like they do have some sort of a marking on the top, and it's supposed to stay firebox temp. And I would imagine they they have that into their part. And also the gauge itself, um, it looks like there's a little white band, a little green band, a yellow, and then a red. And that's accurate to the movie. Okay, so those are all the part three car specific components. Um, I went through all six of those as I had seen them. Now I'm going to cover the legacy issues, the, the issues that are common with all three versions of the hot toy back to the future DeLorean. Uh, these I have covered in my previous video. So if you've already seen that, I'm just going to cover the same things, but I'm going to zip through them. I'm not going to take too much time on these. This first image here, you can see how the gauges in the glove box are sitting very far forward on the dash. And if you look at the, at the image to the right here of the actual, the actual screen use car, it's right up to the edge of the knee pad. So this gauge cluster needs to be brought down to the knee pad. Also, the knee pad is a light gray in the Hot Toys car. It needs to be painted the exact same color as the dash and the center console. And also, I'll just mention it quick, the shift boot. It's got a turtleneck. It bugs me. I, I, I know it's just because the material's bunched up there, and what can you do? Okay, on these images, on the top left, the instrument cluster. See on a Hot Toys, they chose to put these four rectangles. Four on this side, and they have four on the right-hand side. Those are completely non-existent on the real car. I don't know why they chose to do that. And then if you look on the bottom images, the seats, they have a really large stitch on the Hot Toys. And when I measured the Hot Toys Part 2 car that I had, those stitches were, they were about an eighth of an inch. So you're close to about an inch per stitch. And look at how small the stitching is on the actual seat. It almost makes sense in the toy not to even include the stitching just show them as lines or not even at all. Uh, it just, it really stands out. Um, also in that same image, you can see the flex capacitor. It's, it's a light gray in these photos, but in reality, it's a dark gray, almost the same. Yeah. Almost the same gray color as the seats, which would be the same gray color as the dash. And on the doors, you can see how the a pillar on the hot toys is like kind of like a trapezoid um in the actual car it should be a consistent width all the way up um the other issue being the door handles on the hot toys they have these extra lines cut into the door and the real delorean doesn't have that it kind of reminds me of have you have you guys seen 
Better Off Dead, that 80s movie with John Cusack. It's like when his mom is trying to come up with a recipe for something, like she's making a dessert, and she says that the instructions got wet in the rain and uh, she couldn't make out everything. So what she couldn't find out, she like improvised and it's got raisins and you like raisins. I feel like that's kind of how the first DeLorean maybe came out for hot toys. Like they were, they got like 85% of it right. But then the other details are like, well, I don't know. Um, well, let's make it a trapezoid A pillar. Let's put extra lines in the door handle because why? You know, I don't know. It's interesting. Anyway. Okay. And the last thing I'm going to touch on is the lights. You can see the headlights on the hot toys is a blue light. Um, in reality, the uh, DeLorean, it's an eighties car. So it's got the more warm glow to it and the tail lights, they have them all lit up. And I don't know why you'd want your turn signals always on, not even blinking, just on and same with the reverse lights. Um, the tail lights for the DeLorean is just the, the single, single red bulb on either side. Okay. So there you have it. There's the deep dive into the hot toys, part three, back to the future DeLorean. If you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. If you haven't, so I'll continue to put out DeLorean content in the future. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. the ladies home journal the mail got wet in the rain so some of the pages ran together but what i couldn't read i just improvised with my own little creative ideas you see it's got uh, raisins in it you like raisins thing i'd like to discuss with lane the subject is the mystery car